What's up guys, today I will be showing you the behind the scenes of the Stackpolis minigame. It's the first time I'm doing this video, so if you enjoy it, and if you want to see me doing more of these in the future, just let me know in the comments, and I will make sure I will read them all. So, I'm standing here at the entrance of the Stegopolis minigame, and the first thing you will notice is that there are four players around me, and they all have a seven segment display displaying their amount of score. So, that's the first redstone part of it. When you start to play the minigame, each player will activate a lever, and this lever will toggle some end gates, and they also it also toggles this door. So after toggling this lever, the machine knows that player one is doing the game. Player one enters the corridor, he takes a shovel, and then the next step you do is you travel down using this button. But the button also is a failsafe, and a failsafe, well, it basically makes sure that no players can cheat. So when a game, a level ends, uh, the players will all have to press the red button and suicide. And why do they have to suicide? Well, it's very easy if they don't there is always a possibility that they will have some extra sand from the previous wave. The next thing is the blueprint. Before you start the game, by pressing the button, the player will first inspect the blueprint. So you've got a rough idea in your head how the structure looks. And the blueprint is just a bunch of seven segment displays and I used the exact same design as I did a tutorial on a couple months ago. The only difference is I replaced pistons with redstone lamps because of their better readability. And let's take a look behind the scenes of that. So this is how the blueprint looks from the outside. It's basically the seven segment displays all stacked. And when I stacked it, all I had to do was program in all of the the blueprints and I could do this by placing torches and repeaters and if you want to know more about these seven segment displays check out my tutorial I explained how they work there the second part of the blueprint is the counter the counter basically selects which wave it has to display at the moment it's displaying the first level as you can see the signal travels up by these torches and it travels up until it reaches the very very top. The next thing the player does is press the green start button. The green start button gets remembered so if you press it a little memory unit will remember it is pressed until all of the other players also pressed the green start button and if they all pressed it, sand will drop down, as you can see here. And the sand that drops down is just enough to make the whole blueprint. And how did I do it? Well, it's very easy. There is a program called MC Edit, and with it you can place sand floating in the air that will stay floating until you update one of the bottom blocks. So I just did it by activating redstone. And again, this is a little counter. It's a vertical counter this time. And it will count one up each time all of the green buttons are pressed. After the player has built his blueprint, he presses the red button. What happens when he presses the red button is the next chunk of sand falls down. And what this is, is basically the exact negative of the blueprint. So the structure you, you see here is exactly the same as the blueprint and the floating sand above me is the negative. So it's 5 high and if there is no, no block in the blueprint there will be 5 blocks in the negative. If there's one block in the blueprint there will be 4 in the negative. That's basically how it works. 
and if you have exactly the same blueprint as it is shown here it will form a perfect cube and I'll quickly demonstrate that so the sand gets updated falls down and it forms a perfect cube if your blueprint was not correct there would be like gaps in this cube in the, in the top layer of this cube for instance a little like this and then when the sand gets checked the top layer will get pushed by one block and that's what these pistons are for and when your cube isn't a perfect cube this sand block will get pushed into this gap and no sand will fall down here this row for instance if it get, gets pushed by one block there will be one block falling down so if you have a perfect cube there will be a whole line falling down here and that's basically how we get checked so the row falls down into this huge end gate and if it's a full row like you can see here all the repeaters here will get activated I'll show it again all the repeaters get activated so each repeater deactivates a torch so if all of the repeaters get activated all of the torches get deactivated and this line of redstone gets deactivated when this line of redstone gets deactivated this torch gets activated and when that torch gets activated you basically gain a point so if your cube wasn't a perfect cube there wouldn't be a full line so for instance if you played really worse then it would look something like this so only one repeater got activated and a little bit after that the whole system got reset so let me show it again so the next thing that happens is the clear so what happens is these pistons here they all retract and water will flow down as you can see here and then TNT drops down and now the whole thing is cleared the only thing that's a little bit difficult about this is the timing because the water has to stay down exactly long enough to let all the TNT explode and don't cause any damage to what's around and the second thing is these pistons will need to stay retracted long enough because otherwise water will start flowing everywhere destroying the redstone torches and the buttons and what else so after that's done the player kills himself by jumping in the void and they will respawn that concludes the video, I hope you enjoyed and remember to leave a comment if you want to see more of these in the future.